I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video, and this is a PayPal request from Jose Ballard. Thank you so much. If anyone wants to request any type of reviews for movies or something else, re reviews, topics, reactions, pretty much any type of video, you can request it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And now I'm talking about the sequel, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. And I'll be honest, I don't remember where the hell I got this DVD. <laughs> I don't remember if someone sent it to me. I don't remember if I found this for like a dollar or two out of curiosity. I don't remember at all. Because the sequel was one of those films that when it came out, I wanted it to be good. Maybe I, at the time I even fooled myself into thinking, maybe. Translation? Well, <laughs> And then the translation for that, I don't want it to fucking suck. Sometimes I don't want movies to fucking suck. I don't. I didn't want Die Hard 5 to suck. Because I love the Die Hard films, the first four. I really didn't want a good day to die hard to be the good day to kiss my ass. Or a good day to suck ass. Or a good day to eat shit. Eat shit and die hard. That's, my, that's the ultimate title for Die Hard 5. Eat shit and die hard. That'll be part six. But I, I didn't, because here's the thing, I like the idea of a Ghost Rider movie, you know, and just the character. I'm not a guy that's the most familiar with the comic book, but the character, the look, the, I mean, the, it's a cool, badass anti-hero. See him kicking ass on the big screen with a decent sized budget? Sure, why not? Nicholas Cage returning? Hey, I liked the first one. The first one is not great, but I liked the first one for what it is. Does it have flaws? Sure. But I like Nick Cage, I like Ava Mendez, I like Sam Elliott, I like some of the some of the Ghost Rider scenes look cool and look like it would belong on a movie theater screen. The stuff with his motorcycle going up the building and you know pulling down the helicopter and pretty much telling the pit you're pissing me off. I didn't mind that moment. There's moments of that nature. And Nicolas Cage, yeah, he has that quirkiness with the jelly bean eaten. And, but he was at least controlled somewhat. Here is Nick Cage unleashed. And yeah, sometimes that could be fun. I didn't think he was fun in this. It was more annoying in this. And so, you know, it's a sequel to a film I liked. And I... The character seems really cool and badass as a guy who's a noob to the comic book. 
And on top of that, the directors, Neville Dean and Taylor. I mean, these guys did Crank and Crank 2 High Voltage, two films I really enjoy. Two of my favorite Jason Statham films. Gamer, a lot of people hate Gamer. I enjoy it with Gerard Butler. I think it's a fun film. Uh, yeah, it's not as good as, say, The Running Man, but the da- but Gamer I thought was entertaining. And the directing style of Neverdean and Taylor worked for those movies. It worked for the Crank films because it's all about adrenaline or shocking your, your, your system. And so that sort of pumped up. It makes sense why the camera's doing what it's doing. And plus it's R-rated so they don't have to hold back. Same with Gamer. It's R-rated. They don't have to hold back. And on that instance, I could deal with the herky-jerky camera because that sort of intensity of playing a video game is about gamers controlling a person and Call of Duty, however you want to put it. Whatever name, whatever Battlefield, Call of Duty, whatever game you want to mention. That type of direction did not work in this film. Especially with a movie that is pigeonhole, pigeonhole with a PG-13. There's no fucking way this is going to get an R rating. We know this. There's no fucking way they don't have this film rated R. And so, the camera work that looks like someone's fucking drunk and need to go home, pull over, take a fuck test, say your ABC's backwards, that type of direction, it may work for those films, but it doesn't work for Ghost Rider. Nick Cage, they just turn him loose. When he's like, you're a bad man. And this dude, he feels, he's just scraping at the door. He's scraping at the door. He's scraping at the door. I'm like, he's, he's scraping at the door. I feel stupid acting like that for the fucking camera. Fucking. But that's what happens in the fucking movie. And Nicolas Cage, I like him as an actor. Nowadays, sometimes he makes interesting films like Mandy and Color Out of Space. Uh, I like Mom and Dad. I know many of my friends did not. That's cool. But I'd rather watch it that than this. Because at least I enjoy the concept of Mom and Dad here. Once again, you get lame villains. Just like in the first movie, you had lame villains. Uh, you get, really with the Ghost Rider, I swear it felt like, like four scenes with the Ghost Rider himself. Because the budget was cut. The budget was not nearly as much as the first film. Because the first film did well. But I guess not gargantuan to the point that it took, what, five years for a sequel to come out. And then the budget was dwindled. That's why it has to take place in fucking Romania. Because a lot of times when, not all, but a lot of times when it has to take place in a place like Romania, it's because of budget. Because it's cheaper to film over there. And even as a sequel, it doesn't work with the original. Because yes, it stars Nicolas Cage once again, but it never mentions Sam Elliott's character. Uh, what happens to Sam Elliott's character at the end? I know he he turned one last time. He ran off on his horse. Did he go to a fucking Burger King? Did he go to uh, Menards? Did he go put a bumper sticker on his fucking horse's ass? Or did he go to heaven? I mean, I don't know what happened to Sam Elliott's character. Eva Mendez? I know at the end of the first film, he's off on his journey, but no mention of Eva Mendez's character. And by the way, the end of the first movie, the end of the first film, because I just did a commentary, because uh, Jose Ballard asked for that. That'll be uploaded before this. Just watched it here. At the end of the film... He talks about how he, he tells Peter Fonda's character, the demon, the devil, however you want to put it, I'm going to use his power for good. To fuck you up, to destroy you, to mess with you. How does this movie start? Oh, he's on the run. I thought he was going to use his power for good. Now he's on the run? I thought he was going to fight the devil. Now he's not? I, I mean... It's like, take what was set up at the end of the first film and abandon it. Again, the whole point of the end of the first film, I'm going to use this power for good. That's one of the reasons why he didn't let Peter Fonda take away the power. 
that and probably Peter Fonda would have fucked him over as well because that's his he's known to do that but I mean that was prevalent at the ending I'm going to use this power for good now at the beginning of this uh, I'm on the run and I'm just hiding and he even says literally I don't help people at the end of the first film I want to help people think about that at the end of the first movie I want to help people at the beginning of this film I don't want to help people those are two very different fucking things in the script it's like Melody and Taylor or did they write this film oh of course story by David S. Goyer S for sucks screenplay Scott M. Dimple Seth Hoffman and David S. Goyer oh David S. Goyer Oh, the writer of Batman v Superman. Oh, David S. Goyer, the director of shitty films like The Invisible, The Unborn, and Blade Trinity. Oh, David S. Goyer, the fucking idiot that went on a goddamn panel and said, Well, the She-Hulk was only made so that the Hulk could find someone to fuck. Not knowing that She-Hulk was a cousin. So apparently he thinks either incest is cool or he's a fucking idiot. But he's writing all these comic book movies. Oh, who here has heard of Martian Manhunter? Now, who here has ever been laid? So apparently, if you know Martian Manhunter, you've never been laid. And this guy writes comic book fucking movies. I don't know why I'm talking like Timothy Oliphant with his teeth clenched. Because David S. Goyer makes my ass pucker. That's fucking why. And so I'm watching it. I'll tell you the story of the film. Idris Elba. I forgot he was in this. He plays this French monk, Moreau, who warns his monastery there's going to be attacked. They don't listen to him. So, of course, it does get attacked. And the bad guys, the devil, the demons, whatever, they want this boy because they want to use him to pretty much be the Antichrist. And the boy's name is Danny Ketch, which I know that's a character in the comic book, but nothing to do with this. Danny Ketch... From what I remember, Danny, I mean, I'm again, I'm I'm sorry. I'm a noob when it comes to Ghost Rider comics. But I thought Danny Ketch was pretty much the same age as Johnny Blaze. And he would be the next Ghost Rider or another Ghost Rider. Yeah, I don't know how that timeline works. Not a little fucking boy who's going to be used to be the Antichrist. I can imagine who, what diehard Ghost Rider films thought of this fucking plot. Do you think the first film's bad? I can watch that. And enjoy it. And enjoy... You know, I like... Mark Steven Johnson's direction. I don't think it's as bad for what kind of film it is. Here... You know, the story sucks. It's run the mill at best. A boy for a prophecy. Yeah, I saw that back then in the days of the prophecy. With Christopher fucking Walken. Where Casey Jones from the Nine Ninja Turtles had to keep this kid safe. From, from things like Christopher Walton's character. It was part of the prophecy. She's like, this is a fucking prophecy. How about a prophecy to stick a dick through a fucking donut? Is that going to be another prophecy? They said it'd be an easy prophecy to fucking do. Unless you don't like chafing. Or maybe you gotta shave your dick to fit through the fucking donut. I don't fucking... Like, this movie really does suck. Okay, uh, Nicolas Cage's over the top performance, I found him annoying. I liked him in the first film. Here, I could barely stand him in this performance. The rest of the characters, the woman who plays the mom, uh, I feel less than indifferent. She, she did nothing for me. God awful? No, but just fairly forgettable performance. The little boy, same thing. The villain, I... Not even much that this guy, I forget the actor's name, Johnny Whitworth. The actor, I don't mind, like his tone of voice, his presence, but he's given nothing to do with the script, so he can't make it work. And when he becomes DK, he's just albino, he makes things DK, but once again, like it seems like any villain is no match for Ghost Rider, so it doesn't have any punch to the to the action scenes of the finale. In fact, the only time Ghost Rider gets his ass kicked, the four or so times he appears, is when he's an idiot. There'll be times where the writer, why does he do this thing? That he's twitching back and forth? 
I'm like, are you going for the night at the Salty Roxbury? I don't know what the hell he's doing. Like, he does these twitches. And, okay, when he first sees, when his Ghost Rider really fully first appears, there's the boy, there's the mom, and there's some bad guys. Why, he's doing like these twitching things. And then there are times that he just, he's at one point staring at a guy forever. Like, literally, this scene's like, That's literally how long the Ghost Rider is staring at one fucking guy. I'm like, oh, you don't kiss him? Oh, you don't fuck him? And so, then there's another guy who who has a fucking grenade launcher. So, hmm, what could Ghost Rider do? I'm going to jump forward right on top of him so that I'm on top of the grenade launcher. And he just goes, and Ghost Rider goes, boom. He's a fucking idiot. Ghost Rider is a fucking idiot. That's the only time he gets his ass kicked is if he's a fucking idiot. And I, yeah, I don't know why he stared for like a minute at this one guy. He's like, do I want to fuck him with my chains? Do I want to tie him up? Am I into s and Let's find out. I don't fucking know. So he either got Cage trying to talk with the mom saying, you're the devil's baby mama. You got shitty jokes, like how Johnny Blaze talks about emissaries of the devil that's gone through the years that he's taking human form, including the shot at Jerry Springer, because apparently Jerry Springer's form was of the devil. Wow, that joke really fucking lasted as <laughs> relevant. I guarantee you there'll be people who watch this don't even know who the fuck Jerry Springer is. Just uh, Nick, Nick Cage's performance is just I keep harping I didn't care for his performance I thought it was weak I thought it was over the top yeah sometimes over the top could be funny The Wicker Man could be funny but I don't call that a good movie well really no one does but th this just I mean they're you're bad man he's gripping at the door it's ridiculous but that's their point. That's what the directors wanted. They knew Nick Cage had this uh, habit or this... What do you even call it? Uh, people think of Nick Cage as they give his over-the-top, ridiculous acting. And they just said, yeah, supercharge it up. And this was done poorly. That's a tightrope you have to walk. With Nick Cage's acting. Why do you think my favorite role of his is in Con Air? Or, or The Rock? Or even the National Treasure film. National Treasure films. Mandy. He worked well in Mandy. 8mm. Great movie. These are films where for the most part he's kept. Even Mandy. He's not nearly as over the top as in this. Not nearly. So, there's a second time he turns on the Ghost Rider, where he's against the bad guys again. He kills them with his chains, like wraps around them, they burn. I don't understand this one bit where he gets a blast, but then he's up to upright and he's twirling around in 360. Can someone please explain what, I didn't, I don't understand that. Why is there a scene where literally, okay, I get that he was blown back or from a grenade or whatever, but why is he twirling in a circle and a 360 face up? That looks like some of a shitty music video. I, I don't understand that. that. That looks stupid as well. There's the bit they spits bullets back on a guy. Could be cool, maybe, if we saw the whole effect. Instead of being hampered by PG-13. But again, you never know an R-rated Ghost Rider film. Never, so. Again, he, like, he, 
He has this habit of jumping in front of people with grenades or bazookas. I swear, that might even happen twice in this movie. Like, he sees a guy with grenade launcher bazooka. He's like, I don't, I don't understand it. That's around the scene where he, t- he gets the mining machine, a big part of the trailer, and he turns it so it's a hellfire version of mining machine. And just you know what the the a special effects are not as not that terrific because of the lower budget and so I've just seen CGI CGI C, I just I lose I did, the idea is like ooh cool but the idea is quickly dwindled like pissing on a fire after 40 seconds and you're like okay Sometimes him and the kid bond. Uh, the kid asked him, uh, "Do you pee fire?" He's like, "Yeah, like a like a flamethrower." So the kid visualizes the Ghost Rider pissing fire like a flamethrower, and Ghost Rider looking back and going, "Yeah," because that's I mean, do I need? Even though it's a the mind of a child. Do I still need to see Ghost Rider piss and fire? And then, even on top of that, Neville and Taylor. It, it's at times it seems like they want to go ultra crazy, but it doesn't. If it wants to keep, you know, sort of a neutral path, the first film did that better than this. If it wants the crazy over the top path that Neville and Taylor are usually known for, it doesn't do that far either. Because the action scenes, it's hard to even call them mundane, the, the few that are in there. And because this is maybe the only time they did PG-13, so they're hampered with that. And it's just, these, in retrospect, these guys were not the right choice for a Ghost Rider sequel. They were not. And... It's funny, I remember at one point one of them said they were going to do a Twisted Metal movie. Guess that never happened. So one thing leads to another, the John will work with villain, he's dying, the devil, demon, whatever the fuck you want to call him. Which, I'm sorry, I like Peter Fonda. Yeah, Peter Fonda was not given the best performance either in the first film. But that actor, I just, Peter Fonda I got more of out of than this actor who plays the, the head villain. But he gives the Johnny Whitworth the power to be, I think he's called Blackout. So instead of Blackheart, it's Blackout. Sounds like a fucking video game. Pretty much, why don't you just call him DK? I, maybe that's from the, maybe Blackout is from the comic books, perhaps. So he DKs people. Okay, is there any positives? I don't mind Idris Elba. Idris Elba... He was shot at earlier in the film by the mom. And so later when he sees her, he's like, I hope you're finished shooting at me. And Idris Elba's having a bit of fun utilizing the French language and the fact that he's alcoholic, but he's a monk, and he's, but he's also got this sense of humor. Like, Idris Elba is doing the best that he can. Yeah, I do quite like Idris. And part of me wishes the whole film was him or he was the ghostwriter or something. Uh, you can't see it. Yeah, you can't really see it with that, but you know, Idris Elba, he's been a lot of stuff. I mean, he's been in the Thor films and what was that recent one he was in? Hobbs and Shaw, he was the main villain in that. I think part of me is like, just have Idris Elba be, if you're not even going to follow the sequel ending, like, the sequel bait ending, I'm going to protect people. I'm going to fight. Nah, never mind. Wow, just don't have Nick Cage. Just have Idris Elba's the lead. I'm not saying that. I mean. But I mean, the action scenes are nothing to run home about. At times, the, the fight scenes end too quickly, just like in the first film. This one, it seemed like because of the lesson budget, you couldn't do 
you had to do even less. The story is nothing to write home about. The dialogue is nothing to write home about. The music, good luck remembering the fucking music. At least the first film had that Ghost Riders in the Sky song at the end. And you had, I believe, Christopher Young working on it. Who did the score for this? David Sardi? Definitely no Christopher Young. <coughs> but Christopher Young had a bit more to the score than this. And I already mentioned that song at the end credits. The... So, you, <coughs> fuck, losing my voice already. So you get to the third act, and they've gotten to this monastery. Christopher Lambert, he's there for five minutes. <coughs> like, seriously, five minutes where he's the head monk, he's got all these tattoos on his face, and he's a crazy asshole. He pretty much says, we need to kill this boy. He's not one of God's children. If we kill the boy, then the devil can't have him. Which, <clears throat> I've seen that many, many times before. I saw that in End of Days. Where Rod Steiger is telling the people, don't kill her, don't kill her. And then the devil comes in and like, uh, Gabriel Byrne punches one guy right through the head. I'd rather watch End of Days. Which was another movie about prophecy. Except it was a little boy. End of Days pretty much did this plot a lot fucking better. You want to see a better version of this? Go watch End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger. At least I had, you want to fuck with me? You're a fucking quiet boy compared to me. A quiet boy. At least you have Arnold shooting grenade grenades from a launcher into the fucking devil. And blow up a fucking subway. <laughs> shooting the shit out of the devil. Tricked the devil's ass. Fuck you. <laughs> I love End of Days. Watch that instead of this shit. Idris, I mean, the decay fucks up everybody, including Christopher Lambert. So now the bad guys have the boy. By this point, Johnny Blaze, Nick Cage's character, has been exercised. Because apparently you can do something to get rid of the power. He does. And then him, Idris Elba, and the mom go in there. Idris Elba shoots a bunch. Bah, 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 bah. Then DK kills him. Uh, Nick Cage is captured. Instead of killing him right away. For some reason they just want to talk, talk, talk. The James Bond syndrome. Where the villains talk. The, we're not going to kill you yet. We're not going to talk a bit more. And then the boy comes up and he says, oh, I want to kill him. I'm like, why the fuck are you buying the kid? They just believe the kid because they're fucking idiots. Yeah, this kid has been running away from us for the entire film. Let's trust what the kid says because, you know, he can't do something called lie. So the kid uh, makes a deal with uh, Nick Cage and is able to give back the power to Nick Cage, he becomes Ghost Rider. That moment where he swings the chain, he kills like 40 in one move, which, again, like, it doesn't realize how that's not satisfying. Imagine the opening of Blade, and Blade killed all the vampires. He went, he threw one thing, and it was done. And that was the opening. You'd be like, what the fuck? Imagine Constantine when he had the, the cross shotgun. He did one blast, like a BFG style, boom, done. So then you get into <coughs> an action scene. Which most of this is in the trailer, and that's the thing, like most of the trailer, it's action, is the ending. That's one thing I want people, if anyone who's in the business watches this, which there's none, but in case some fate serendipity, why don't you do this? When you make trailers, don't show anything from the second half of the movie. Again, 
food for thought. Don't show a single scene from the second half of the movie so that whenever people see it, they have the second half is totally new. Because usually they save the big for the the finale, the ending. Save it all for the first showing. You should have enough good shit in the first half to sell a movie. If not, then your movie sucks. Sorry, your movie sucks. Again, food for thought. And that's where the, the sequence where it's a car chase and it's trying to be like the road warrior but not as good. I mean, yeah, I like that the ghost rider turns the vehicle into hellfire. There's some decent practical explosions where cars are flipping over. But he kills the black blackout fairly easily. Roadkill. Horrible CGI, the dead body hit the fucking uh Ro uh, road and then when he gets to the big bad guy just wraps him in the chain lifts him up fucking rock bottom which you saw in the trailer if you see in the trailer that he throws someone up takes the chain slams him down that's the fucking head villain and that's all he does to it and just sends the motherfucker back to hell and then there's a really abrupt ending did we win? yes Hell yes. Then it cuts to him on the road on the Ghost Rider. Then it cuts to end. Credits. That's just a really abrupt ending. So again, what do we have here? We got lame villains, lame story, cookie cutter story that you've seen 50 fucking times. I mentioned End of Days is a better version of this. Ghost Rider, because of limited budget, you only see him like maybe four times. The action scenes, if you saw the trailer, you saw everything. Especially most of the ending. Uh, even the Ghost Rider look, I, I don't like his jacket as much as I did in the first. I don't like his motorcycle. I thought his motorcycle looked cooler in the first film, and I thought his jacket. I mean, I, yeah, I get the idea that the jacket or the pants legs... They have like a charred look to them, which is interesting because of, you know, he's on fire. But, I mean, maybe the Ghost Rider himself maybe looks a little bit better effects-wise on the face because he'd have five years to improve on that. But I just really like the jacket. Like, I the first one I like the jacket, especially when he put the new one on, he put the spice t -t -t. But that was cool and that's missing out of this. Uh, my spirit of vengeance. Absolute blast. Harry Knowles ain't a cool news. Right. Okay, Harry Knowles. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Lame characters. Idris Elba is trying his best. Lame fucking movie. And that's why you didn't get Ghost Rider 3, because this film bombed. And the next thing you see, Ghost Rider is all on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like Marvel thought so little of his character that instead of rebooting it to have an actual fucking full length feature film their first appearance for Ghost Rider in the MCU is a goddamn TV show and it's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. not even like on the Punisher or Daredevil Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. again and they felt so uh, yeah that guy f fuck ha giving him a movie it's like the Punisher fuck well, they gave him his TV sh own TV show, to be fair. Uh, but, <laughs> a few episodes of Age of the Shield, that's it. Um, but it's a TV budget, so you're not going to make Ghostwire look good at all. Because it's a TV fucking budget, but... Hey, it's Disney. They know what they're doing. Duh, 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 yeah. But yeah, thanks for watching. Take care, and yeah, this movie sucks. Later.